Okay, welcome to the uh, Algebra Final Review. We're going to go over Standard 6, and uh, we're talking about linear function models and also looking at patterns and making rules. Basically, in this section, the review covers um, taking from a pattern, making a table from a pattern, um, looking at how the patterns grow, predicting what, say for example, remember doing these where we said what will figure 100 look like, and also looking at um, writing a rule for it. Okay, a couple things on a linear pattern, a straight line pattern we want to be thinking about. Okay, first thing we want to be thinking about is how many tiles are being added each time. Is there a consistent number pattern of where the tiles are being added and is there a relationship between the figure number and the parts of the pattern? Now, with a linear pattern like the ones we're doing under standard six, these um, will always grow by the same amount. In other words, I'm always adding two tiles, or I'm always adding five tiles, or I'm always adding 20 tiles. Never um, any different. And when we get to the table, we'll kind of review that. Okay, so here's the figure that they give us, and they asked us to show um, how we're getting the progressively larger arrangements. Okay, so if I look at here, I look and the first initial way I look at it is I look at, like I said, like the body and the arm sticking out. So I see kind of a body here and then maybe body here in the middle and then arms sticking out. So let's see how many we've got here. Okay, if I look from this figure to this figure, it looks like I've added the one here, one here, and one here. I kind of favor that because it looks like the center part stays the same and just it's going out. In this one, it looks like I've added um, one here, one here, and one here. With this being the white part here being what was in figure two to begin with. Okay, now we can look at it in a different way. Let's see what a different pattern might look like. Um, we might look at it, let's see, as growing by this one has three and so this one you could add two you had one let's see so you might have said well I went from having three on the bottom to having five on the bottom and so here's the two that are hanging out on here and then there's one more there and the same pattern would follow here I went from having five to having seven and so uh, the ones being added would be these three I believe right here oh sorry those two right there color them in all the way and one up here now that that pattern will work it has some inconsistencies about where this this column attaches but it still lets us see let's go back to this original pattern and let's think for a moment if I work the pattern backwards it looks like I would have added this to this one and so I would expect figure zero to just be a single block okay we need to write a table for this and uh, I know I've got one with a table on it I'm just going to pull it here for a moment. I'm going to fold this under because I really don't need that. So here's my table. And let's look. One of the things we said that was important to look at is the number of tiles in figure one, figure zero, one, and two. Figure one, I mean figure zero, we said would just have one tile. Figure two, the total number of tiles, I'm sorry, figure one has four tiles. Figure two has five seven tiles figure three has ten tiles now I can see that there's a consistent pattern I'm going to use a different color because we're going to talk about the amount that it's changing the amount of that this is growing is this grew by three and this grew by three and so I, my next prediction would probably be that figure four would probably have thirteen in it if I kept going. I can also see that growth rate in 
the table. This went up by three, this went up by three, and this went up by three. So I would expect this to be 13, I would expect this to be 16, and this to be 19. Okay, now, that gives us a good idea of how the pattern is growing. I'm going to move this for a moment, get it back, and let's, um, let's talk about what figure 100 would look like. We already know it's going to look something like that. And I'm going to break the figure into three parts. I'm going to have basically this one part here in the middle that always seems to stay the same. It had one in it. And then, how many are going this way, how many are going this way, and how many are going that way. Now, let's look back at our figures, and let's see if we can connect this number here to the figure number. Okay? Um, well, when I had figure one, I had one in the middle, and then I had one on this side, one on this side, and one on that side. When I got to figure two, looks like I've got two over here, two over here, and two over here. Let's not forget the one that we started with. Here I have three, three, and three. Okay. And of course in figure zero, oddly enough, we had zero out here, zero out here, zero out here, and one there. So I see a connection. How, what is the connection between the figure number and the shape? Looks like I've got the same number so I don't need to add or subtract anything from my figure number. So whatever the figure number is, is going to be out on each of these arms. So figure 100 is going to have one tile in the middle, right there. It's going to have 100 going that way, 100 going that way, and 100 going that way. Now, if I had a different pattern like the one that I had in the previous unit that I did, I just showed you a little bit, Let's look at this one and see. Figure zero, it looks like everything's being added here. I had one, then I had two, then I had three. So I can see the figure number connection there. And I, uh, okay. Anyway, remember, like, if this had been a three, three, and a three, you would put, instead of doing, oh, I'm sorry. I get off track for a second. Now I want to look at what figure, I'm going to call it figure X would look like. It's going to have X going out that way. It's going to have X going out that way. It's going to have one in the middle. And it's going to have X going out that way. And so, the reason I made that connection is because this number, if, it's, if this is X, those are the same. X, X, and X. Okay. Now, we need to write a rule from it. This number right here is going to tell us when we write out y equals mx plus b. Okay, remember this is the rate of change. If it's constant, it's then going to be a linear, so we're going to use this form. And this is for the rate. The rate it is changing is it is adding 3 each time. So this is going to be 3x. Okay, how many did we start with in figure 0? In figure 0, we just had one tile, so we're going to put one. So our rule is y equals 3x plus one. Let's check that on figure 100. Figure 100, the x would be 100, so 3 times 100 is 300, plus one gives us 301. If we look at the drawing we made, we see that we do have 301 tiles in that figure. Let's look at our drawing that we made of figure x. If I add these up, I get 3x plus one. So another way of getting at the rule from looking at the pattern. This will be more helpful with quadratics than it will be with linear things, but still be aware that you can get the rule from the pattern. I hope this, uh, let's go ahead and answer the remainder of the questions. Um, let's see if we've done these. Where did the pattern appear in the table and the figure above? We talked about that. We talked about how the that uh, pattern is in there. How many squares would be in figure 100? We said 301, and we wrote a rule. And so I believe, let me check the rule, and it looks like we did a good job on it. So good luck.